All right, welcome back to Power and Play. Medyo naglulukol lang itong aking uh, monitor dito. Tignan natin if we can fix this uh, for now. Pero sa ilang sandali, magsisimula na rin ating... Meron tayong isang special interview na parating. At uh, marami nga tayong mga naiisip na uh, magre-restart ang ating mga sports sa ating... Uh, sa, sa PBA, they already did that sa Kalamba... Sa, sa, sa Clark, rather, with the uh, All-Filipino Cup na nanalo nga itong Barangay Hinebra. Now, the question is, when will other sports also begin? And uh, alam naman...
Ngayon po makakasama natin dalawa sa mga inaasahang uh, mataas na mapipili sa papasok po na PBA draft. No other than uh, Troy Reich and Leonard Santi Santillan. Uh, good day, gentlemen. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Well, uh, you know, I guess I want to put this in proper perspective that uh, the two of you uh, were, were actually committed to the 3x3 program. Um, and, and, you know, you skipped the draft actually last year uh, to remain with the 3x3 program and help the country uh, probably qualify for the Olympics. And right now, of course, we are in the qualifiers and we have two of the 3x3 stalwarts there, Alvin and uh, Joshua. But you guys were an integral part of that program. In fact, you just com you competed uh, this year. What made you change your mind or what made you decide, I guess, uh, to enter finally the PBA draft? I'll begin with you, Troy. Um, I, I just kind of felt it was time. I think there was a lot of, I don't know, unfinished business with 3x3. We had a lot we wanted to do, a lot we wanted to achieve and kind of, you know, take that next step towards, you know, 3x3 getting us to the Olympics. Obviously, the pandemic kind of put a wrench in those plans. It kind of messed up the timing of everything. And I hope that that journey isn't over completely for me, at least, you know, representing the country in some capacity. That's definitely a dream for me. So we'll see what happens with that. But I think just after talking with my family and, you know, really thinking about it, I just felt like it was time for me to enter the PBA draft. Santi, ikaw, uh, bakit ka nag-decide na ngayon ang panahon na para pumasok sa PBA? Uh, kasi po, uh, po kasi dati, uh, nangarap lang ako mag-PBA. Kaya uh, ito na siguro yung time na para ipakita ko yung uh, kung ano yung mga skills na gagawin ko sa PBA. Uh, yun nga, uh, gagawin ko yung mga best ko para sa mamakalaro ako sa PBA. Ang, ang ibig bang sabihin nito, Santi, uh, hindi ka na uh, mananatili sa 3x3 program at uh, uh, kumbaga eh, yun na ang katapusan ng uh, kumbaga ng uh, karir mo pag sa paglalaro ng 3x3 uh, hindi naman sa ganun uh, parang in-stop ko lang yung 3x3 para dito sa PBA kumbaga uh, kung meron pa naman na uh, chance na makalaro sa 3x3 why not dito di ba eh, gagawin namin yan All right. Well, uh, Troy, I, I know you. Um, you know you had a short-lived stint, of course, in the UAAP with NU. Uh, it was a one-and-done thing, and of course, you were practically known for three x three because of what you've done. You've been able to do win championships uh, there. Uh, uh, how has the Chooks three x three program prepared you for your uh, possible new career in the PBA? Yeah, I mean, I think it just really allowed me to work on my skills was the biggest thing because 3x3 is all about versatility. So having to to guard guards was a big thing for me. Uh, dribble a little bit more than I was used to, just kind of do things. To be quite honest, I had kind of maybe been a little more uncomfortable doing prior in my career. But also, I think just playing the game more, you know, maturing. And then also, you know, just playing in the Philippines longer, I think, in general, is always going to be a benefit but i think specifically through x3 allowed me to work on some skills and hopefully get me to a point where i'm i'm ready and be able to make an impact in the pba santi ikaw uh, kilala ka of course the uaap you played uh, very well in the uaap and tapos napunta ka sa 3x3 uh, sa tingin mo ba nakatulong ito sa sa evaluation ng skills mo yung uh, paglalaro mo sa chooks uh, 3x3 pilipinas Um, opo, uh, na, malaking tulong po sa akin. Si Mas Troy, uh, nakagard din ako ng mga relate sa akin, mas mabilis sa akin. Kaya, uh, tapos uh, in-improve ko pa yung mga shooting skills ko. Kaya dun, dun din dahil sa 3x3. Well, basically, we know that, um, you know, uh, it is a, you are a work in progress. You know, you are a, a, a very good players. Uh, you come into the PBA bringing a lot. But is there a part of your game that you still feel uh, you have to work on? Kalangan mo pa rin ayusin? Uh, I'll begin with you, Santi. Uh, siguro yung ano, pa, ano ko pa po, uh, depensa. Kasi mas malaki na yung mababantayan ko. Uh, mas uh, matigas, kumbaga ganun. Uh, 
Yan yung mas i-improve ko po para sa PBA. Troy? Um, I don't know. It's hard to pick one one particular thing because I definitely view myself as a work in progress. There's a lot I want to work on. I would say just being super consistent maybe. Like just, I guess this is a bad answer, sorry, but just improving on everything. <laughs> just be the best rebounder, the best right. defender, the best whatever I can be to help the team win. Just taking that to the next level because I think I'm going to play a similar game as I always have, but obviously – Playing in the PBA is kind of you gotta you gotta step your game up a little bit with everything. Uh, if you are asked when you enter the draft, Troy, uh, what kind of position uh, fit you the most? I mean, you know, let's say you're you're in a uh, a coach's entry meeting right now, and they ask you, what would you like to play in the PBA as your role? Given the fact that one, the players are bigger; two, the players are more experienced. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I, if I was being 100% honest with him, I'd say I'm open to playing anything. I think I can play the center and, and guard some of the bigger guys in the league, but also I feel 100% comfortable being out there with an import or somebody and spacing the floor. So for really whatever, for me, it's whatever the team needs. Santi, ano sa tingin mo makokontribute mo sa isang koponan sa PBA? We know that you can hit the jump shot, uh, but and we know that you've played uh, big in college uh, but kakaiba to ng papasukin mo ngayon dahil um, obviously mas malaki at mas mabibilis sa makakaharap mo ay uh, yun nga po uh, mas malaki yung mga katapat ko uh, sa akin naman is uh, uloran naman ako pwede ako mag-point guard day job lang <laughs> ano lang <laughs> uh, yun nga mas uh, mas kilala ko pala kasi yung katawan ko uh, yun gagawin ko naman Pwede rin ako mag ano, power forward, uh, small forward. Yun yung mga uh, uh, nalaro ko na dati na position. A- ano ang pinaka inaasahan mo? What are you most looking forward to uh, in entering the PBA? You know, we've, we've all, we all have our images of the PBA and uh, we all uh, grew up with the PBA. So ano yung uh, excited ka, Santi? What are you looking forward to, Troy? I'll start with you, Santi. Um, siguro, una, yung makakalaban pa yung idol ko or makakampi. Uh, yun yung naka-excite sa akin entering the PBA. Medyo may konting nervous, uh, pero yun naman talaga kailangan eh. Uh, i- i-over mo yung nervous para makaya mo do sa PBA. Troy? Yeah, I mean, I just think playing with a bunch of these guys I looked up to, since I was a kid, but also just at this point, I feel like I have a lot of, you know, hopefully friends in the league and guys I've played with in 3x3 and UAP and all this stuff. So just to be sharing the court with them again, I'm really looking forward to it. And, and when you talk about these players, uh, the players that you would like to play with, uh, who would that be, Troy, in particular, and Santi? Um, <laughs> oh, am, I, am I going first? I, I think Santi. Yeah, yeah, you go ahead, you go ahead, Troy. Oh, uh, okay. Um, <laughs> I mean, everyone, I guess, I, I've always looked up to, like, Gabe Norwood. You know, mm-hmm. ever since I've gone out here, he's he's been so helpful to me and, you know, uh, helping me adjust and everything. So it'd be nice to play with him or to play against him. That's I guess that's one guy who stands out to me right away. You're talking about Gabe. Before I ask Sandy, you're talking about Gabe uh, and, yes. and helping you adjust here. Um, uh, was he a mentor to you? Uh, is he somebody that... Uh, you know, has a big influence yeah, and you're coming over. I, I felt a little corny, like using the word mentor, but I, I guess you could you could use that. He definitely, you know, we live in a similar area and he was one of the first people I met, like when I when I got off the plane. So just naturally, I won't I won't pretend like we're, you know, falling asleep phone calls every every Sunday <laughs> night or something like that. But definitely if I ever have a question, he's he's there to help. Excellent. Santi, sino ba, sino ba ang uh, binabanggit mo na player that you look forward to playing with or uh, I guess basta makasama mo lang sa sa PBA. Uh, si ano po, yung inaudulo ko talaga si Mark Ingles. Kasi Ingles. una po, uh, po. Kasi una po, uh, outside the court kasi uh, dati walang wala siya. Nung dahil sa basketball, lagi yung ano siya, napakain niya yung pamilya niya. Kaya nakakarit din ako sa story niya. Uh, ganon din ako dati. And second is talagang machachallenge ako pag kabantayan ko si Mike Pingles kasi yun nga, kung paano siya maglaro, puso talaga. Uh, parang 
yun nga, parang parehas kami nang nilalaro ng ganun eh. Oo. Oh. Ah, pinag-uusapan natin si Mark Pingris. Unang-una, kilala mo na ba si Mark? At pangalawa, sabi mo nga, no, nakaka-relate ka sa story niya. Ito ba ang isa sa mga bagay na nagtutulak sa'yo, Santi? Is this a motivation for you to get to the PBA? Um, una po, nung, nung una ko po siya nakita nung ano po ako eh, nung Mighty Sports kaso, nung Mighty Sports kalaban na Magnolia, tune up game kaso hindi po siya naglaro, sayang ako eh <laughs> yun, yun nga po, una dapat ano eh, wag ang match up eh sayang, pero yun nga, yun din yung ginagamit ko na motivation uh, ng dahil sa kanya Alright, uh, you know, you, you will probably not only play with certain idols that you have, but you will play against a lot of people now when I ask, you know, I'm, I'm curious to know, who are the players that you want to guard? Uh, is there a particular guy that, you know, um, fascinates you or captures your imagination about, you know, the, you know, you hear about how difficult it is to guard him. Uh, is there one player in mind or a couple, uh, Troy? Well, I, I kind of want Danny I to come out of retirement. I want to guard him because I, was, I, I got to guard him a little bit during NU practice, and he's, <laughs> he's he's still got it. That's for sure. But so maybe someone who's who's active. I think you know June Mar is definitely someone that stands out as a big who's just really really difficult to guard. And I will also say when it's when it's game time for him, it's like a whole different level. So I've you know I've gotten to guard him in like scrimmages and practice and stuff too, but. When, it, when it's winning time, I'm sure it's going to be a whole different beast. So that's something that'll be tough and definitely a little nervous if, if that matchup <laughs> ever comes. But I think it'll be fun. Well, well if we had uh, a PBA 2K edition, uh, obviously Danny I would be among those that uh, would be exciting to see playing against you. Danny I was a two-time MVP and uh, up to now he's in terrific shape. And of course, if you guard June Mar, that means you'll have to bulk up a bit because... He's uh, he probably outweighs you for about by about twenty to thirty pounds. So it's yeah, well, be, I've been it's gonna be cool. I've been I've been eating a lot of panza and rice during uh during the quarantine. <laughs> so maybe I can I can get there. Then maybe you can uh, play with Bo Belga or uh, Jr. Kenyahan, the uh, <laughs> on the rice boys, huh? <laughs> yeah, 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 I'll have to eat more, but I'll get there eventually. <laughs> Santi, ka meron ka bang gustong uh or meron ka bang pinapanaginipan na gusto mong pantayan mula pa nung uh, nangarap ka na pumasok sa PBA? Uh, si ano po, si Calvin Abeba. Calvin? Uh, wow! Oh. Uh, kasi nakikita ko laro na ma talaga matsa-challenge ako. Yung pagiging agresibo niya sa offense saka defense. Saka yung re rebounding yun talaga yung uh, matsa-challenge ako pag nakabantay siya. Kagaya ngayon, nakita natin si Calvin, ang laki ng pinagbago, uh, Santi. Uh, ikaw ba humahanga sa kanyang uh, pagbabago, sa kanyang transformation uh, mula sa pagiging bad boy? Eh, ngayon, nominado siya bilang uh, Sportsmanship Award. Is that something that uh, naka, nakakuha ng attention mo? Um, Oo oh, naman, kasi kailangan naman sa isang tao is uh, magbago. Eh. Yung naman uh, kagandahan ng isang tao. Uh, tagang na-inspired din ako sa, sa kanya. Uh, nanalo din siya ng sport match. Alright. Well, you know, uh, I know that, you know, outside of the PBA, there are, there are uh, so many other leagues. Of course, you played in the collegiate leagues in the, in the Philippines. Um, but growing up, uh, and let's just look back a little, who are your idols? And uh, how did you pattern your career? Uh, if there was one or two particular people, um, who you idolized, uh, who would that be, Troy? For me, uh, it was always Tim Duncan, if I'm being honest. I looked up to him, the way he played the game the right way, made his teammates better, just did the little things to help his team win. That was always what stood out to me, and I always wanted to kind of pattern my game after him. Santi? Maybe Troy Wright. Uh, right, right. Wow. Yeah. I inspired him because <laughs> because yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to add the push shot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, was, yeah. I was just gonna say I want to change my answer from earlier to the player I want to play with is Santi. Uh, that's, that's <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> Hopefully that'll that'll come true. Go ahead, Santi. I you never know. Yeah, yeah. Po, ano, si LeBron James. LeBron James. Uh, yeah. In pinaka-idol ko. Uh, Naraginginan nga kasi 
una, uh, yun nga, sabi ko kanina, walang-wala siya dati, pero basketball. Yun din yung naging uh, achievement niya para magawa niya lahat. At saka nakatulong din siya sa mahihirap, kaya yun yung nakaka-idol sa kanya. Well, those are two big names. Tim Duncan, Lebron James, parehong uh, legends, parehong obviously Hall of Famers in the future. Uh, you know, um, you know, let's play a little naughty game here. As, uh, you know, uh, Troy, if you were to broadcast and uh, the draft and the name of Santi or Leonard Santillan comes up as uh, one of the picks, can you... Give me a scouting report of Santi, mm -hmm. or oh, how he plays and what he brings to the table. Go. Okay. All right. So I would say versatile, a uh, good outside shooter, has some post moves, able to finish inside. He can guard bigs. He can guard guards. I think he has a good tenacity to him. You know, Puso playing hard, and he he can he can do everything. Whatever you ask of him, I think he can fit into a team and and be a complimentary player, but if you also need him to go score or maybe feed him in the post, he can, he can do everything for you. Wow. That, those are really nice, good, big words uh, to live by. Kalangan medyo malaking hamon yan, Santi, para sa iyo. With all those words of Troy, yeah. it's going to be interesting how you live up to, those, to that description. Santi, tinawag ang pangalan ni Troy Reich as the uh, pick for the 2021 PBA draft. Describe mo uh, as a broadcaster kung ano ang strengths ni Troy Wright. Uh, si Troy, uh, una yung shooting niya kasi nag improve na yan eh, si Troy sa shooting. Then, he's a good screener also. Uh, yung paging uh, hard roll niya talagang makakaputos ka agad eh. And, at yun, uh, maasaan mo si Troy sa rebounding. Yung importance sa kanya. Well, I, the other thing I would add there, is that Troy Reich is a great person. He's just a, an overall good guy to have in the team. And, uh, you know, I, I've heard a lot of stories about you, Troy. Not only, uh, you know, your short stint, for instance, uh, even with Gilas, um, your, your, your stint with NU and, of course, in Chooks to go. Uh, you are a gentleman of the first order. And, I, you know, that's the same thing with Santi. Uh, and that's, what, that's why I like, you know, having guys like you because, Obviously, that uh, carries on to the PBA, and you know we make the PBA a better place. All right. Oh, I appreciate that. <laughs> well, all right. Is there any special outfit for the draft, guys, that you will be wearing? Uh, I know that this will all be done virtually. So, um, you know, are you already preparing for this? Uh, you know, something like um, you know a little a little bow tie or a little uh, vest inside, uh, Troy. Um, well, I'll definitely, maybe like a virtual background or something. If we're doing a virtual draft, I'll have to make sure I have the perfect kind of scene behind me, get a green screen in there. But in terms of outfits, ooh, I don't know. That's kind of fun though. Like, I feel like it's almost less pressure because you're not in person. You can even, <laughs> you can even wear something a little wacky. So maybe I'll, yeah, I'll get a bow tie out or something. Nice. Nice. And colors, obviously matching together. The, 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 yeah. The, yeah the I'm going to coordinate the colors with like the background. That's so right. Maybe I'll have like a little baby blue with a beach or something. We'll we'll, we'll figure it out. Talking about color, Santi, are you going to be wearing the uh, De La Salle green uh, in the uh, in the uh, draft or an merong special na barong jan o ano ba ilalabas natin mula sa baol, Santi? Yun yah, yun para gisi pa ko pa yah. Yun dalawa din yung suggest mo na green kasi dati University of Visayas green din. Uh, Very good. Pa, eh. ba, yung green, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you can always consult uh, Troy. You know, it, it seems like he's he's got some uh, very nice ideas there. <laughs> and of course, if you are allowed to bring someone in the draft, you know, whether it's virtual, whether it's actual, and it's one or two people that you'll be bringing to the draft, guys, who would it be? I'll begin with you, Santi. Uh, si ano, Mrs. Ko. Ayun nandito naman lagi. Tsaka yung isa si yung mama ko. Uh, nandun sa Cebu. Sana uh, makating siya dito ng set. Kung baga pagdating sa draft yun. Ano ang ibig sabihin sa kanila ng pagpasok mo sa TVA draft? Kasi 
una, yung si mama, nung mag-try out pa lang ako eh, siya na yung kasama ko eh. Uh, yun yung, kaya dahil, dahil lang din na uh, isa din siya sa papuntahin ko dito. Very good. Troy, who will it be? Who will be beside you on the day? Yeah, I mean, I'd have to have to definitely say my parents. I think people always say like, oh, I wouldn't have made it without my parents, but I really wouldn't have. Like I, my basketball career, them supporting me, them them believing believing in me, I wouldn't have. I wouldn't still be playing basketball without them and them just being uh, the best parents I could ask for. So the least I could do to thank them is hopefully have them by my side on draft night. Is is this part of this of the dream that you share as a family? Yeah, definitely, definitely. I think. I'd be I'd be lying honestly if I said it was like a specific dream of you're gonna play here or you're gonna do this. I think my parents just wanted me to to play basketball and to enjoy it as long as I can. And right now I'm I'm having a lot of fun and just to be able to still be playing basketball is a blessing. All right. Well, very quickly, I I know this may this may be easy for you to answer, but you probably won't say the right answer. Uh, but you know, just feel free. To give me a, uh, to give me a, <laughs> um, you know, a, a safe answer. But if you were to be asked, which team would you like to choose you? Which team would it be, Troy? Uh, I'll, I'll just whatever team chooses Santi. That's, <laughs> it's kind of it's it's non-negotiable, actually. You know, that's that's the only team I'll go to. I'll put that out there. Absolutely, <laughs> Santi. Ka, meron ka bang Meron ka bang gustong puntahan na kuponan? Hindi namang because, it's not only because you like that team, but because you feel you're gonna be used in that team. Uh, nasabi ko na rin kasi, uh, Magnolia. Yung Magnolia. Gusto kong, mm -hmm. yung gusto ko well, ang team. Well, makakasama mo si Mark Pingris doon. Hopefully, yeah, sa kanyang uh, later years at uh, matuturuan ka pa niya. Let me end this uh, this uh, short chat that we had by asking you, you know, it, it's a few weeks away and obviously the excitement is building up. But what does playing in the PBA really mean to you personally? I mean, what does it represent to you as a person? Troy? I mean, I think it's it's just another, it's a challenge, I guess, a an achievement and a challenge at the same time. So... I think it represents a lot in terms of making it to that level. You have to be at a certain skill level and a certain number of accomplishments, but also at the same time, it's a it's going to be a huge challenge. It's a new opportunity for me to improve as a basketball player and also prove myself as a basketball player, I hope. So it's just a new chapter that I'm excited to get started. Very well said. Uh, Santi, anong ibig sabihin sa'yo sa, sa pagpasok mo sa PBA? Personally, anong ibig sabihin sa buhay mo nito? Uh, una, blessed ako na makapa, makapasok sa PBA. Kasi alam mo, dati from na sa daan lang kami nakakalaro ng basketball. Yung ring pa nga, yung gulong pa lang eh. Kaya talagang malaking achievement to para sa akin. Uh, uh, yung achievement din. Well, uh, we certainly expect the two of you to be, to be uh, prominently uh, you know, uh, considered and of course we expect the names Troy Reich and Santi Santillan to be loudly called on the day of the PBA draft. Good luck, gentlemen, and uh, stay safe, Troy, in San Francisco. Santi, keep safe. Jan sa San Juan, and we will see you on draft day. Thanks Thank for having us. So Thank you. Thank you. That, of course, was Com Noli with uh, Troy Reich and uh, Leonard Santi Santillan. Ito yung mga papasok sa darating na PBA draft as we continue this edition of Power and Play. Ito pa rin po si Noel Zarate, pitch hitting for Com Noli Ayala. At ngayon, habang pinag-uusapan nga natin ng PBA, ang PBA nakapag-bubble nito kakatapos lang na taong, uh, at kakatapos lang na taong, a very successful bubble held in uh, Clark in Pampanga. At ngayon 2021, magiging tuloy-tuloy uh, pa rin ang hardcourt action at least sa pinaplano nila. No? Pero sa volleyball, eh, hanggang ngayon ay naghihintay pa rin tayo ng balita. Ano ba talaga ang latest? So right now, we do have a very special guest here on Power and Play. We will get to talk to no less than the chairman of the Philippine Super League, Philip Popoy Wico. So uh, we'll bring in Chairman uh, Popoy right now. Good morning, Chairman Popoy. Noel Zarate here. Good morning to you. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Uh, 
Yes, yes, I can hear you, uh, Chairman Philip and uh, the Chairman Popoy. Thank you for joining us dito sa Power and Play. Uh, kamusta naman kayo right now in the middle of the pandemic? Things are looking up, pero kayo personally, how are you doing? Well, we're uh, following government uh, uh, regulations very faithfully, uh, following it strictly. Uh, those who uh, have reached a certain uh, age level uh, can only go out, do certain things for specific purposes. So we're following that. We're following well, that. Personally, uh, I find this uh, lockdown, uh, I enjoy it actually, being at home and uh, doing work and not going out and uh, uh, and staying here and communicating. You know, this Zoom is really a blessing, this, this type of thing, you know, because you can accomplish things without going out, uh, yes. without going through the traffic, without... Uh, uh, mixing with other people physically, uh, at the same time you're able to relate to them uh, virtually or electronically. Well, thank you, thank you for for joining us via this new medium of a virtual meeting. And let's let's dive right into uh, the the plans of the PSL right now. And you, we do have the Beach Volleyball Challenge Cup. We didn't have it last year, but of course it's going to be in Subic. And I heard yesterday that there was supposed to be a group that was supposed to do an ocular in Subic. So, kamusta naman? How did it go? Well, yesterday uh, we we did they did not have the ocular. We had a lengthy meeting with the. Uh, with the regional task force, the SBMA, everyone was there, the DILG, the PNP, the DTI, uh, the DOH, uh, everyone was there and we met from 6 to 7.45 in the evening to sort, uh, to sort out things and to agree on certain, uh, uh, to agree on certain modalities on how we will uh, conduct the games. Uh, it's definitely no uh, no spectators allowed uh, because uh, the um, the SBMA has already prepared for a no spectator type of arrangement, and that has been the approval of the uh, board of uh, directors of uh, SBMA. And uh, it was a very productive uh, meeting. And um, next week, maybe midweek or early next week, an ocular will be done together with. Uh, uh, Dr. Laurel, the president of uh, uh, PSL, and uh, Gino Panganiban, and we will they will be checking out the hotels for the quarantine, for the le leisure, the playing arena, although Gino is very familiar with that. He was uh, competition director for the SEA Games in the beach volleyball. So he, he, he knows this uh, area like the palm of his hand. Chairman, Chairman Popo, you know, with the Beach Volleyball Challenge already in full go, no? we're, we're going to have this at the end of February. How about the All-Filipino Conference um, this coming March? You think it's going to be in a bubble format as well? Uh, what are your plans for the All-Filipino? Noel, I did get uh, more than half of what you're saying. I think there's some kind of interference. Sorry, I will repeat the question, yeah, okay, Chairman okay. Popoy. I'm, I'm sure you can hear me right now. Um, since the Beach Volleyball Challenge Cup is a, is a go already, how about the new ating All Filipino Conference in March? Is that also going to be a go? Is it going to be in a bubble format? What are the plans for that? Well, definitely it will be in a bubble format um, because that is what, again, government requires. Although you plan for so many things, things can change instantly uh, because of the quarantine status of the uh, locality where you have your games being played now so if you're uh, if we expect uh, a GCQ uh, status in certain areas we cannot play there we cannot mm -hmm. play in GCQ areas it has to be an MG CQ modified but we don't know yet because uh, certain areas that we were eyeing used to be GCQ and uh, uh, several weeks ago it was changed to uh, they were MGCQ, it was changed to GCQ, and now uh, there is a, there is talk that they will be brought back by first by first week of February or beginning February to MGCQ, which uh, which is very ideal for uh, a sports competition. So uh, I told all of these plans are uh, are uh, dicey. That you have to a lot depends on the environment. Uh, you know how the numbers change in the locality, the infections, and all of that, especially with this variant. No? Yes. 
Well, of course, uh, we, we hope that uh, things clear up para magkaroon na nga tayo ng all Filipino because all we see right now are the girls on Facebook, you know, workout videos. Ibang nga dyan, nagtitiktok na nga eh. So, uh, I think these girls are just trying to keep busy. Pero let's talk about the number of teams also. There have been some reports na may umalis na team, may sumaling team sa PSL. What is the actual size of the competition of the PSL right now? Yeah, maraming fake news eh. Uh, Yan na nga eh. As you know, fake news is deliberate. It's planned. It's malicious, and it's uh, and it attacks the integrity of of professional journalism. You know that you mm-hmm. are a journalist, and uh, it's a it's a bane to the noble profession of uh, writing. And these people ought to be condemned because they tend to mislead people. The misinformation that they're peddling. Uh, also misleads other uh, other sectors. For example, there was that report that Santa Lucia is uh, is uh, joining another league. Uh, I think this was uttered by an official of, of that league. And uh, I talked to per- personally to Mr. Exi Robles, the owner of, of Santa Lucia, not just the team, but the Santa Lucia uh, conglomerate. Because he was the one I talked to in 2017 when I invited him to join the uh, PSL and I was with uh, Freddy Halasco. And in a few minutes, he, agreed, he decided to join. So I talked to him. Uh, that Saturday, I think, Saturday morning or Friday morning, and he said, Wala, wala kami plano, hindi napapag-usapan yan. So you see how a lie can be repeated so that it becomes almost true. It's a lie. It's a blatant lie. Uh, and, uh, and, kumbaga uh, sakwan eh, if you follow up that story, in effect, nakuryente uh, ka. Mm-hmm. You believe something false. And, you know, I, we condemn that in the strongest terms because it does not perform any positive, uplifting service to the valuable community. It tends to confuse everybody, the networks, the sponsors, and all of that. It's dirty. It's below the belt. It's foul. Okay? And yeah. then, in the case of Petrogas, I clearly said that Petrogas will join the beach volleyball and that if the schedules do not conflict, they will also join the indoor tournaments. And you can... Confirm that with Mr. Rafi Villavicencio and we'll discuss this and I talked to him the other day again. I just said, oh, Rafi, just to reconfirm, huh? beach volleyball, yeah. In fact, we want to know where are the practice sessions and when because we want to get ready. He said, indoor. Sabi niya, you know, the indoor, as I committed to you, uh, we will play if there is no conflict with the other league. So fine. So again, another report said that... Uh, uh, Without mentioning me, I made a mistake or I made an error. And then another report said it was a lie. Ah, sabi ko, you know how you can twist things? Naalala ko tuloy yung ano eh, si Mr. Trump eh. <laughs> uh, former President Trump in a few days. Yeah. The way he was making, uh, he was, uh, you know, he uttered 22,000 lies during his term. And you know, it, this is one example of the, that, that kind of lying. Mm-hmm. So, well, of course, uh, yeah, go ahead, sir. Eh, ano eh, hindi nakakatulong yan, walang ganyanan. Uh, it's ungentlemanly. Huwag w- ganyan. Uh, that, is an, that belongs to another world, uh, dirty politics. Hindi naman tayo mga politician dito. We are uh, servants of volleyball and the people. We are volunteers. Uh, yeah. we, are not, uh, uh, we are not here to, uh, uh, to acquire so much wealth power and influence, hindi naman ganyan eh. It's not in our case. Uh, hindi kailangan gawin yung mga ganyan. Yeah, well, of course, just the other day, I think it was just uh, yesterday, actually, Dr. Laurel came up with an open letter uh, calling for the unity na ba ng uh, volleyball dito sa bansa because amid all of these uh, fake news nga na sinasabi nyo. What was your reaction to Dr. Laurel's uh, open letter? I agree 1,000%. In fact, uh, I texted him, I said, uh, uh, Meron kulang dyan. Sabi niya, ano yun, no? Sabi ko, sana you say something about we stand for integrity and honesty. And you stand for integrity and honesty. Because there's so much 
there's so much uh, dishonesty going on. And, you know, it has become parang a, an accepted norm. Hindi pwede yan. We will go down uh, in chaos as a country and as a community if we keep on doing that. Bastusan ng bastusan, tiranan. Wala na mangyayari sa atin dito. And how can you work together kung ganyanan ang ganyanan? So, huwag ganyan. Hindi pwede yung ganyan. Hindi, hindi, ano yan. Basta, tell the truth. Tell it now and tell it well. There's nothing wrong with propaganda for as long as what you're saying is true. That's part of organization's duty to spread news propaganda about it for as long as it is true and it does not damage others' reputations. Uh, yeah, Chairman so, Popoy, I just wanted to ask also, since we are in, in the middle of a pandemic also, and the vaccines are coming out also sa mga iba-ibang sectors dito, uh, is there, uh, um, I don't know, you may procurement na ba na ginawa ang Philippine Super League to acquire some vaccines for yes. for its teams? Yes. Yeah. We have made an order for 1000 under vaccines under the under the co-negotiation program of uh, Mr. Joey Concepcion and our request is being processed. Uh, there are batches, no, of uh, vaccines and we are there in one of the batches and probably uh if things do not go, if things go as planned, maybe we should have them by May or June. Uh, in the meantime, we will make do with uh, with no vaccines and use the bubble. But we don't even know what the government policy will be on vaccine in sports. So mm -hmm. we don't know. Uh, because, you know, one of the problems with the vaccine, I am told, and this was also validated by other doctors, is that the vaccine will protect you. Uh, from infection uh, almost 100%. But if you do get infected, it will not be severe. Mm -hmm. That is one thing. Number two, the antibodies uh, are formed not immediately after the vaccine is uh, injected. No? After you've been vaccinated, it will take several weeks, probably after the second one, a few days okay. after the second one. Mm -hmm. Even if you have been vaccinated twice, first and second time, there is no finding yet which says that you will not pass on the infection to others. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you you are safe because you are going to be uh, immune from the uh, you will what I'm saying is that you will be protected from the uh, virus from COVID-19. But for example, if I meet with you, Noel, yeah, physically, and you have some indications of. COVID without us knowing, and, but I, I will not get it because I am I have been vaccinated. Whatever I get from you, I could carry it and infect others who have not been yes. vaccinated. So yes. it's a matter of social responsibility that you okay. still follow the rules even if you've been vaccinated. Wear a mask, wash your hands, avoid avoid close contact. If you're going to meet, limit it to a few several, not more than an hour, uh, go to open spaces. In the so we will have to discuss this with the teams, with the medical experts, because the question has arisen. Are you going to require uh, players to uh, be vaccinated? A lot will depend on the IAT, what they say. If they say no, no player in any league will be allowed to play without a vaccine, for example, collegiate leagues, IATF through CHED says you cannot play without being vaccinated. And then I guess if you want to play, you just have to follow that. Well, okay, I have one more question. We're running out of time here, sir. My last question para sa inyo, Chairman Popoy. Uh, ano bang inaasahan natin sa upcoming uh, NSA, uh, volleyball uh, NSA elections? What are your hopes and aspirations for the landscape of Philippine volleyball? Well, uh, number one, we don't know why elections are being held. Uh, because as far as I know, the LBPI is a member in good standing. Uh, so I think, I don't know, I'm just, this is secondhand information. They're, I think they're questioning that. Okay. Number two, if elections do uh, continue, uh, if will be held, 
definitely Dr. Ian Laurel will run uh, for president. He is the most prepared. Uh, he, is, he is an honest person. He has integrity. Uh, he has no hidden agenda. He has no personal interest in this. Former volleyball player. Um, he has moved always for the union, the unity of, uh, of volleyball, for the volleyball community. And um, let us see. Uh, things are very fluid. Uh, we don't know uh, why you have to hold elections at this time when we have, again, we have a pandemic. There are so many issues to be resolved. But, uh, it's like a square peg in a round hole. But, uh, you need uh -huh. this like you need a hole in the head. We have been how to reboot and restart the leagues. And here you are coming up with the red herring starting. Uh, I don't know. Maybe some parties have hidden agenda. Uh, but there is. Uh, I think uh, uh, the Dr. Laurel will be there. And uh, other people in the PSL who, who should be there uh, will be there. Well, thank you very much again, ano, uh, Chairman uh, Popoy. We're, we're just about out of time for this segment, but always enlightening uh, talking to you. And of course, uh, good luck with the Philippine Super League as planned, especially with the Beach Volleyball Challenge Cup. At sana tumuloy -tuloy na yan, and we can have volleyball back in the landscape. Thank you very much, Chairman Popoy. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much once again to uh, Chairman uh, Philip uh, Elio Wico, of course, of the Philippine Super League. Yeah. And at this time, nais natin pasalamatan ng ating mga sponsors dito po sa Power and Play. At una sa listahan itong ating uh, mga kaibigan sa Big Boss Cement, Big Boss sa Tatag, Big Boss sa Tibay. Nandito na ang Big Boss Cement, di basta natitibag, approved sa kalikasan at sobrang abot kaya. Big Boss Cement is the first eco-friendly cement company in the Philippines. The first and only cement that is produced with low to zero percentage of high carbon footprint materials. Big Boss Cement. At susunod din dyan, of course, ang ating cherry loom, ang yerong may aluminum. Sa ganito pa bago-bago ang panahon, mga kababayan, sobrang init, biglang uh, umuulan na kailangan natin ng matibay na protektadong bubong. At uh, dapat ang bubong na may yero, na may, uh, uh, yero, na may aluminum. Kapag ay, uh, may aluminum, Tsak na pang matagalan at isa sa mga alam nating uh, de kalidad na yerong may aluminum, of course, yan ang cherry loom. Tibay protektado sa pang matagalang yero. Cherry loom, ang yerong may aluminum. At katuwang din natin ang Elms Kapihan and Bar, Elms Resto Bar Group, home of Native Eating, is now open in four branches. Capitolio Pasig, kung saan ako madalas tumambay, uh, Calle Bistro, Commonwealth Quezon City, Robinson's Novaliches, and Poblacion Makati. Siyempre pa rin, ang Joyride, ang Bago Mong Kasundo, and of course, shout out na rin sa MP School of Makeup Artist, uh, Artistry, and pati na rin, sa ating uh, skin clinic or skin clinic. So yan, ha? yan ang MP, pati na rin sa ating uh, skin clinic. So yan ang, uh, so far ang mga sponsors din natin. Once again, this is Noel Zarate. Pinch hitting para dito kay uh, Com Noli Ayala. And right now, we are going to have a special taped interview with Com Noli himself. Uh, kausap niya itong ating 1992 Olympic bronze medalist si Roel Velasco at of course si Coach Boy Velasco. Let's listen to this interview. Ang pamilya na talaga namang nagbigay ng karangalan sa ating bansa, ang pamilya na nagprodukto nag, uh, ng uh, dalawang boksingero sa kanilang pamilya na nagbigay ng medalya mula sa Olimpiada. In fact, the last medal for the Philippines in the Olympic Games. Walang iba kundi ang Velasco family. Tayo po'y mapalat na makakasama ngayon si Coach Nolito, Boy Velasco, and of course si Coach Roel Velasco, ang 1992 bronze medalist sa Barcelona Olympics. Maganda-magandang araw sa inyong dalawa, Coach Boy at uh, Coach Roel. Magandang Will. araw din po. Uh, magandang araw sa lahat. Magandang Marami araw din po, sa, uh, Sir Nole. Maraming salamat sa inyong pagpapaunlak. Sayang at hindi natin makasama dito si Onyok. Sapagkat uh, <laughs> alam naman natin na... Uh, Uh, isa sa mga haligi din ng pamilya niyo, si Onyok at uh, of course si Onyok ang huling nagbigay ng uh, medalya para sa Pilipinas sa pamamagitan ng silver medal 
noong 1996 Atlanta Olympics. Pero simulan ko na rin, alam mo, uh, Coach Boy at saka Coach Rowell, no? Uh, sikat na sikat ang uh, Velasco family pagdating sa sa boxing. Uh, paano ba napasok ang pamilya nyo sa, sa larangan ng boxing? Bago ba kayo yung mga ninuno ninyo, yung magulang ninyo o yung mga uh, lolo ninyo ay nasa boxing din, uh, Coach Boy? Yung unang-una, yung tatay namin, talagang nagbaboxing siya pero hindi yung competition, kundi yung uh, pista-pista lang. Mm. Tapos yung mga tuhin ko naman nga parte sa side siyang nanay ko, talagang pamilya talaga ng boxing, mga bylon. Oh, okay. uh, lahat sila talaga, yun ang ano, natin pula nung nag-aaral kami, yun, ano, yun, yun na yung pinaka-resist namin yung boxing. <laughs> Mm, so, ano yan, na, imbes, nga mag, imbes nga bibili kami ng mga pagkain o ano, siyempre sa hirap ng buhay, wala kami pambili. Doon kami sa, ano, sa boxing, nagsusuntukan kami para matapos lang yung resist. Yun ang aming uh, libangan. Nakakatawa. So, parehong parte sa, sa ama at sa ina, parehong mahilig sa, sa boxing. Eh, Coach Ruel, Opo, mahilig oh, pa kayo sa... Ano, yan silang... Uh, kilala sa boxing lalo na sa pamilya ng nanay ko talagang uh, ano sila sa boxing talaga Okay, Coach Ruel, mahilig pa kayo sa away? Mahilig pa yung pamilya nyo sa away? Ah, oh, hindi oh, naman, talaga. hindi, hindi. <laughs> Lahat ng oh. ano naman, mahilig kami sa boxing pero wala ang away oh. Oh. hindi lumalapit sa amin eh. <laughs> oh. Coach Ruel? Hindi na, sa ano nung elementary school kami no, si Unyok uh, nakahanap ng away Umiyak oh. siya, nagsumbong sa akin, nagsumbong sa akin. So, pinuntahan ko at oh. sinunto ko. So, umiyak oh. din yung sinunto ko. Wala namang problema dahil sports lang naman parang ano lang. Ginantihan ko lang siya niyo. Oh. So, so, so ga, ga, yung, ga, ga, ano kaaga kayo na mulat sa pagboboxing, Coach Ruel? Kasi nung uh, tuwing pista kasi sa amin, sa baryo sa amin, no? sa may Bago City, Barangay Tipuluan. Sa Barangay Tipuluan na Bago City. Tuwing pesta kasi sa amin doon may pa-boxing so sumasali kami. Minsan mm. nanonood kami ng mga maliit pa kami hanggang sa nagka-edad na kami ng mga 7 years old, 8 years old. So sumasali na kami doon sa pa-boxing na tuwing pesta. So oh. doon ang nagpisa doon sa tuwing pesta niyo. Kaya dahil uh, nauso sa amin doon yung boxing sa Bago City na every may pa-pesta, may mga pa-boxing. Kahit saan ka pumunta may pa-boxing. So, oh. yung mga tao naging aktibo din sa larangan ng boxing, no? Dahil, oh, okay. at saka yung mga bata Coach talagang nag din. Pero muna Coach talaga boy. yun si Leon, yung Coach Kerobel, nung manilit pa yun sila, nasa oh. ABAP na ako. Bawat bakasyon, tinuturuan siya yung dalawa ng basic pa fundamentals ng boxing. Pero hindi siya sinasabihan na maglaro na kayo. Basta tinuturuan ko lang sila ng basic kung paano oh. stand sila, paano ang suntok nila. Eh, yung liliit nila ay eh, puro kalukuhan. Sila onyo, puro kalukuhan yun. Pag, pag tinuruan mo, nakagano'n yung ulo. Eh, si Ruel, uh, kaliwa, si onyo, kanan. Kaya parang nahirapan ako. Siyempre, hindi naman ganun. Hindi pa naman ako ka-espresyado talaga magturo noon. Oh. Uh, ang ginawa ko, si onyo, pinakaliwa ko. Sabi ko, onyo, magkaliwa ka rin para palus kayo ni Kuya Muruel, uh, kaliwa. Oh. So, oh. si onyo, kanan, pinakaliwa ko. So, Pag nung tinuro ko sila, maganda oh. na yung nagiging ano, kasi parehas na kaliwa. Pero siya yung nagiging kanan. So natural na kanan siya, ginawa mong kaliwa, uh, Coach Boy. Okay. Uh, Tapos kada bakasyon ko doon, mga tag-isang buwan, tinuturo ako sa atas pagbalik ko. Pagbalik ko ulit, tinuturo ako naman sila hanggang na balitaan ko na sa eskwila na naglalaro na sila ng mga area meet, provincial meet. Tapos yung pista-pista sa mga amin, naglalaro na sila. Oh. Tapos oh. Si, sa Bago City, kinuha na sila ng siyudad na para mag-boxing uh, na. So, nabalitaan okay. ko na ng gano'n. So, okay. sabi ko, oh, gusto nyo naman talaga na pang mag-boxing eh. Hanggang okay. uh, na dayo si Ruel sa Manila ng boxing, oh. nakalaban nila, Bago City, yung boxing at the park, yung nakalaban na, Pasibo Team, tapos si, sila Bago City, eh, yung nakalaban ni Ruel na si hindi pala, uh, Bilya Moore, hindi ko ba, Bilya Moore, Uh, magaling din yun. Pero sabi ko kay Ruel, pero kung makatapos ka, kahit matalo ka, makatapos ka, magpaiwan ka dito sa Manila. Pero kung hindi ka makatapos, uwi ka sa, uwi ka pa rin sa probinsya. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Paiwan dito. 
ta, so, yun ang naging lang... umpisa hanggang ito, ito lang, yung sinyok sa murid na yung sumunod. Oo. Oh. Tan hmm. Tanayin ko lang kayo, uh, Ruel, ilaraban mo nga yung, ano nyo, yung, yung bahay ninyo habang lumalaki kayo. Kasi pare-pareho kayo may hilig sa boxing. So, uh, ano ang typical na araw ninyo? Uh, Pagbango ninyo, Uh, ano yan? Tinuturuan na ba kayo ni Boy na, na sumunod so, ko? Yung, na tumatakbo kasi, ba kayo sabay-sabay? Paano ba yan? Nung bata uh -huh. kayo? Kasi nung una, no, uh, una, siyempre pag umaga pa lang yan, nag-iigib na kami ng tubig sa ilalim ng andon, <laughs> balon. Oh. balon. May ano kami, bataas pa akyat, pababa yung ano dun, akyat namin. So kung nagtitibay din talaga ang katawan mo dun, saka yung tubig oh. mo, dahil paahon eh. May paahon, may oh. bababa. So, oh. may dabal dito ng hawak, left and right. So, doon nagdano, nagumpisa. Tapos yung bahay namin, siyempre, merong pansimbag doon sa puno ng mangga. Yun! <laughs> Nakasabit yun. No, sako lang yung nakalagay. Sako, binabalik na natin. Natalian lang, tapos binabalik na. Lagyan na ng buhangin sila. Lep, tapos ipa ng palay. So, yun ang... So, tuwing umaga, nakikita namin doon. So, pagka dumadaan kami doon, yung suntok-suntok namin. <laughs> Tapos, okay. oo, kaya hindi mo rin siya mawawala sa isip mo na yung vaccine nandiyan na. So, yung mga kapatid oh. namin, ito gaya ito siya ni Kuya Boy, talagang nag-iinsayo-insayo na siya. So, so kami nun oh. nakikita namin, napapanood namin. So, minsan, pagtapos naman nila mo insayo, kami naman nag-suntok-suntok sa bag. So, oh. hanggang sa nag-tanim nag din sa utak namin, No. Yan lang tatay naman namin, mahilig din ta sa, talaga sa boxing. So, Turuturuan din kami ng ano, kahit, sabi niya kahit mapagod ka, job shit, job shit lang. So na ano <laughs> oh, din namin yun, nadadala yeah. din namin. No, nakakatawa, nakakatawa, yung, nakakatawa yung kwento oh. yan, uh, Roel at saka Boy. No? Pero uh, Coach Boy, uh, nung, nung nagsisimula ba si Roel at saka si Onyo, eh gusto mo bang iba ang timbang nila? Kasi... Eventually, nung lumaban sila sa Olympics, parehong light flyweight ang mga uh, timbang nila. No? Mm. Pero nung nagsisimula pa sila, ang, ang plano ay eh, magkaiba ang timbang para hindi sila ikanga eh, pareho lamang na division? Ang timbang, wala naman ako sa kanilang ano na kung sino tataso o mm. bababa. Dahil yung pagdating nila rito nga medyo na, ano, na sila magboxing na talagang gusto nila magboxing, yung timbang nila parehas talaga hindi sila pwedeng ano kasi magka magkakain ka ng kakain hindi naman ng dogma sa height nila talagang pang 48 pang 48 lang talagang timbang nila dalawa so no. wala nang magawa talagang parehas sila timbang eh kaya nagagalit no. yung nanay sa akin pag uh, pinapalaro ko sila sa sa Plaza Miranda na sila dalawa maglalaban <laughs> pinatawagan ako ng nanay nga bakit pinapalaban, pinapa, ano ko daw yung dalawa, pinapaala, pinapaaway. Oh, Sabi ko, oh. hindi, hindi away yan, boxing yan eh. Uh, Wala naman so, support, ano, eh. so, supportado naman ang magulang nyo, yung pag, uh, pag-boxing. <laughs> ang boxing, talaga gusto naman ng pamilya namin, okay lang naman okay, sa kanila okay. kung anong hihilig namin, yun naman ang, ano, saka yung boxing talaga, parang naging ano na namin, yung parang naging bisyo mo na ba, yung kasi mas masaya pa yung mga magulang namin nga makita kami na nasa sports ka kaysa kung saan saan ka pa magpupunta. So, oh. Okay na sila doon pag nagbaboxing kami. Saka sa amin kasi pag nag-players ka ng bago city, libre ka na kagad sa eskwilahan. Eh. Wala ka ng bayan oh, tapos may quarters ka pa. Oh. So libre pag ganyan. So ang nanay namin, hindi naman problema sa so, hirap ng buhay. Tama, so tama, libre tama. kami pag-aaral, libre pang kain. So okay lang okay. sa, kaya, sa amin. Okay. Kaya, uh, payag na rin sila. Uh, alam natin na, uh, you know, nag-Olympic uh, boxer si Roel, si Onyok. Uh, Roel, bakit si Kuya Boy Boy hindi nag-Olympic boxer? Kasi nung uh, kapanahonan niya, no? Pang ano lang ako eh, pang masa. <laughs> pang tubis. <laughs> kasi dati kasi siya. Ano eh, duguin yung ilong niya, kaya maaga siya natigil din sa pagbubukting. Uh, kaya nag-decide siya na mag-coach. So maganda naman dahil uh, naging uh, maganda naman ang produkto niya. Kami nun yung uh, naging uh, produkto niya. Ang um, uh, sa akin siguro na kapalaran na baka sa anong bagay sa anong. Kasi yung sa panahon namin, ang team namin talaga, ang pwede ka lang minsan maka-abroad, maswerte ka na kung nalimba sa team B ka, kung hindi oh. ka timbi, 
mabira ka makalabas, bira ka maka-abroad at bira din yung supply mo na maganda. Kasi oh, kung oh. sa team ikaw yun lang lagi yung pinapadali lang, hindi gaya ngayon na pag mag-elimination ka o kahit pag-uhan ka pag tinalo mo yung ano, ikaw ang pinapadala dati pag team ikaw, wala ka ng ano. Eh. Ang katimbang <laughs> okay. ko noon, parehas kaming katimbang ni Printa Banas eh. Oh, so sila, oh, matagal na sila sa national team, nag-abroad na, tsaka pa lang kami tusulpo okay. sa team, tapos parehingi na kami kagad sa kanila. So medyo dihado kami. Ma- matanong ko kayo ngayon, eh, alam natin yung pinagdaanan ninyo bilang pamilya, bilang magkakapatid, na, na uh, lumaki kayo sa boxing. Kamusta ang bagong henerasyon ng mga Belasco? Meron bang uh, sumunod <laughs> sa inyong mga yapak, uh, sa mga anak, sa mga pamangkin? Meron ba, uh, Roel? Uh, ayong sa amin kasi halos uh, kami puro lalaki halos ang kami magkapatid sa siyam kami pitong lalaki ngayon yung mga kapatid ko yung mga karamihan mga anak nila babae uh, kay Ruel mm, tatlong babae nakuha, kay Unyo oh, tatlong, tatlong babae sa lalaki. lalaki naging basketball players pa uh, kaya mag so babae wala. din sa mga kapatid uh, ko halos babae rin yung anak. mga babae nila mga anak nila halos babae Kaya walang sumagal. Baka sa pang third generation kasi yung mga apo medyo mahilig sa boxing eh. Kaya oh, so baka, baka, baka doon lumabas. Baka doon lumabas. Doon sa third generation. Oo. Oh, eh dapat siguro uh, talaga patuloy na tumuto kayo sa mga boxingero para abutin nyo pa yung yung third generation. Okay. Uh, uh, alam mo, tuwing, sabi ko nga tuwing uh, sumasapit ang Olympic year, eh kayo naaalala, kayo ang top of mind ng karamihan ng uh, sports writers and of course, ng mga sports fans dahil alam naman natin kung ano ang ginawa ninyo ni Ruel at saka ni uh, Onyok sa Olympics. Now, a- 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 ang tanong ko, uh, pag ganitong Olympic year, no, uh, Ruel, uh, ano ang ano ang pag dumating na itong panahon na to? Ano ang kadalasang nararamdaman mo? Na no, kagaya nung ikaw ay eh, lalaban sana sa Barcelona, no? Sumapit nang 1992. Ano na ang pakiramdam na palapit ng palapit at Ano ang focus ng training mo? Siguro sa iyong karanasan, dapat di maging focus ng training ng ating mga boksingero. Opo, no? dahil uh, talagang uh, no, sa amin kasi talagang ano, tuloy-tuloy yung training. Tapos sa uh, yung uh, ano namin yung ang, uh, ang pinaka-goal namin talaga yung sa Olympics. No? Dahil... Uh, yung talagang ano namin kaya mga naramdaman namin yung ano din syempre yung maging excited ka dahil ang mga pinaghirapan mo ma ano mo na eh may apply mo na dun sa Olympics uh, mm. syempre mat- masaya ka unang-una syempre dadaan ka rin muna sa butas ng cryo para makarating ka dun sa Olympics so unang-una ma- uh, kailangan makulipay ka rin sa Olympic qualifying so yun pag uh, nakulipay ka yun ang pinakadabes kaya Nung na-qualify kami doon sa Barcelona Olympics, ang ano na ang sagot namin kagad, Ola. Nung kagad na si, <laughs> siyempre, Barcelona, Espanyol. Oo, oh, eh. Espanyol. Oh, tama. Oh, oh. <laughs> so, kalama, tuto so, na ba ng ating ang... buhay. Uh, coach Boy, oh. sa, ikaw bilang coach niya nung panahon na yon, saan kayo nag-focus ka agad nung nalaman yung qualified na kayo? Ano na, pinag, ano ang naging game plan para sa paghahanda ang... patungo sa Olympics? Amin talaga na nagiging game plan kagad nung na-qualified na yung si Ruel nung una sa 1992. Ah, talagang gusto namin talaga na makasabay. Hindi naman namin talagang inano na nga mas sigurado nga makamidal. Kaya yung gusto namin makasabay sa mga kalaban niya. Mm. I, pinu, pinag-research ko na kagad kung sino yung mga matitibay na kalaban yung... talagang nasa okay. top 10. Oh. Yun ang trabaho ko talagang una tapos inano ko na ni research na ni research ko na kung anong mga bansa talagang pinakatakpin dito sa kalaban niya so nakita mm. ko yung itong mga Russia, Cuba, yung USA, ah uh, Barcia, Spain, yun kasi host yun. So mm-hmm. nakita ko so yun ang pinaganda namin talagang training. So sabi ko hindi tayo pwedeng mag-training pala dito kasi pag Olympics talaga Hindi sabi mo sapat na nag-gold ka sa SEA Games, nag-gold ka sa Asian Games. Kailangan i-mix mo pa yung dalawa na yan na sobrang taas talaga ng ano mo. Kasi Label ng training. Ang oh. training mo medyo gitna lang, may iwanan ka na. Hindi may iwanan ka, ka, ka oh. sa may sa Olympics. So, iba talagang iba ng laban sa Olympics kasi nagrabi ang pressure. 
grabe yung pati sa coach, grabe yung pressure, hindi lang pressure oh, yan, oh. hindi talagang ang excitement mo, yung ano mo na makapag makapaghanda ka ng mga players mo para sa bayan natin, para sa Pilipinas, parang hindi mo mala maintindihan kung ang, ang karangalan ng bayan, karangalan mo, yung oh, unang una sa bayan, kagad ang isip mo dahil gusto mo maka gawa rin tayo ng pangalan ng bansa natin, makilala din sa buong mundo na sa larangan ng vaccine. Kaya lang inano ko sa okay. sila na okay. makamigdal so, tayo kung paano man. In other words, talaga yung pakiramdam, yung pakiramdam ay kakaiba. Uh, napapakas- okay, kakaiba talaga. Hindi mo maintindihan. Oh. Hindi mo ma... Ngayon, ngayon. Si ngayon Ruel, minsan ha? naramdaman mo ganun. Isang years, pero mas pag-Olympics, iba talaga. Ay, ngayon, Ruel, halimbawa, nung, nung panahon mo, ikaw, alam mo na excited ka na, papunta ka na sa Olympics. Nung tumungtong ka, nung tumating ka sa Barcelona, may mga bagay ba na inakala mo, eh, ganito yung mangyayari, pero nasurpresa ka na, hindi pala ganyan. Ganito lang pala. In other words, parang mer- medyo na, na-overrate, na yung parang oh, so, so nasobrahan ng training o eh, hindi naman pala ganyang kahirap ang, uh, ang, ang, ang uh, kailangan kong gawin. Meron bang ganong pakiramdam o talagang lahat ng inasahan mo ay eh, nangyari nung dumating ka sa Barcelona? So, nung inasahan ko naman doon sa Barcelona, no, uh, talagang ano, kasi pagdating sa Olympic, kasi parang nasanay na rin kami sa competition ng competition. Eh. Kung baga, yung kaba mo na wala na doon, tapos yung ang uh, ano mo, yung uh, yung kaba mo na wala yung pressure so, ang pressure oh yan ang pressure na wala oh. kasi siyempre sanay ka na dun sa ano laban ng laban sa international so hmm. ang inaasahan mo na sabi mo ito lang palang olympics di ba ginagano mo pa nga minsan ito lang palang olympics parang ano lang din pala to oh. Oh, kasi pero makikita mo yung mga kalaban mo sabi mo ito lang palang mga kalaban pero pagdating sa taas na ring iba talaga yung <laughs> ano nila oh. yung Ibang level. Yung Ibang laro level. nila. O, ibang level ang laro nila. So, talagang uh, nandun yung, ano, yung excited mo talaga sa laban. Nandun. Oo. Tapos, minsan, so, mawala ka rin minsan sa isipan mo na maging blanco ka pero nababalik naman dahil baga sanay ka naman sa laban. No? Oo. Kung, kung meron hindi ka sanay, bagay. talagang mawala yung ano mo. Oo, mawala kasi, yung uh, isipan mo. Coach Boy, al- alam natin, tinrain mo si Rowell, tinrain mo si Onyok. Ano ang bagay na natutunan mo kay Ruel na nai-apply mo kay Onyok at napaganda ang performance? Yung pinaka ano kasi doon sa kay Ruel, yung pinakakuha ka na ng mas dag na dagdag doon sa kay Onyok. Yung ang ano ng mga judges kung paano sila naka nag-score na san mga angulo na ganoon. So mm-hmm. hindi lang pala kailangan na maglaro ka sa taas ng grade, kailangan makukuha mo rin ang angle kung saan ang pinaka nakaupo ang mga judges na ano. Malinaw. So, kailangan makaposisyon ka rin lagi doon. So, minsan, mm. nag-aralan din namin na ina-apply yan. Halimbawa, sa, sa harap mo, dalawang judges doon. So, kailangan magpa-sideview ka doon para kung tumunto ka, makikita at ang sumunto kang karaman mo, hindi makikita ng judges, hindi ka maiskuran. Kaya mm. minsan sabi mo, maraming suntok po si Royal si Yung bakit natatalo? Doon mm. sa angle pala minsan, hindi nakikita ng tatlong judges, hindi sila nakaka-score. Hindi nga hmm. hindi kagaya ngayon, lahat ng judges tanggap na yung score niyon kahit na dalawa lang nakakita, talagang oh. na re-record na kagad. Hindi kagaya dati, okay. pag dalawa, tatlo na kagad ang, ang pinatanggap, ang tatlo lang na judges ang nag-score yun lang. Okay, okay. Ngayon, okay. Hindi, lima na, limang judges, tanggap na. Okay, Ruel, so, na lahat yun. kung may bagay, Ruel, na pwede, kang, pwede mong paguhin sa nagkilawa mo noong 1992, Meron, meron bang isang bagay na sasabihin mo eh, dapat ganito ang ginawa ko, imbis na ganito? So, sa ano naman, no, uh, siyempre, mayroon pa talaga nga, ano, yung uh, pagkukulang, gaya ng, uh, yun niya, yung mga nakalaban mo na Cuba, no, siyempre yung Cuba, parang kala mo, parang bato na, parang hindi matatabla ng suntok, eh, no? So, yun ang ano pa, yung uh, kailangan pa natin na talaga na maging uh, ano ba, ready lagi ba. Yung, uh, kahit pa sinong kalaban. Uh, yung, oh, kahit sinong kalaban, kailangan 
Kaya ano na natin yung ano mga kaisipan ng mga boxers natin na kailangan mm. i-apply natin na maging uh, uh, parang universal boxer din ba? Ituro natin lahat sa mga boxer natin ng mga dapat mangyayari sa taas ng ring. O, para okay. pagdating yeah, sa laban, hindi na siya magugulat o magbibigla. Sabi nga nila, Coach Boy at kaka Coach Rowell, eh, ang karanasan daw, ang experience, ang pinakamahusay na guro o the best teacher. No? At uh, obviously, yung mga nakatungtong lamang sa Olympics, ang nakakaramdam, lalong-lalo na sa boxing, yun lamang ang makakaalam kung paano ang pakiramdam ng tumungtong sa loob ng ring ng ganong klaseng uh, labanan. Now, uh, ang tanong ko, eh, yung, sa karanasan ninyong dalawa, at ngayon may lalaban sa ating mga boksingero, ano ang masasabi niyong payo ninyo na may bibigay? Halimbawa kay Yumir, halimbawa kay Nesty, uh, at sa iba pang maaaring mag-qualify na nakita nyo sa inyong sarili at naranasan nyo nung kayo ay nakunta sa Olympics. Okay. Mm-hmm. Ang pinakamaganda talaga diyan yung pagtiwala ka sa sarili mo at magtiwala ka sa coach mo talagang yun ang pinakaano kasi pag may tiwala ka sa coach mo kahit anong sabihin ng coach mo gagawin mo kasi coach naka, yan ang nakakakita sa uh, ilalim ng ring eh. sa bawat uh, laban yung nakikita ng coach so pag ang boxer na may tiwala sa sarili at may tiwala sa coach pag sinabi ng coach nga itong gagawin talaga gagawin niya yon at saka yung talagang porsigido ang boxing hero na talagang uh, gusto yung manalo, mananalo siya talaga. Kailangan uh, nasa isip niya, nasa puso niya na bigyan niya ng karangalan yung bayan natin, bigyan ng karangalan yung pamilya niya. Talagang naku- makukuha niya talaga yon Kasi no, magtitraining siya talaga ng gusto. Mag- kahit anong pagod, gagawin niya pa rin na tudutudo na training kasi... Alam niya, Olympics ang pinagandaan eh. So, yan ang aming right. mga payo sa kanila. Huwag bibigay ng training basta-basta lang. Makaramdang pagod, di ayaw na. Kaya, banat pa. Banat ng banat hanggang uh, makuha mo talaga yung ano. Yan ang pinaka Very payo namin Very... sa mga uh, bukong ngayon. Roel, ikaw, personal na karanasan mo nung tumungtong ka sa ring, ano ang ma- may, uh, may papayo mo o may uh, bibigay mo sa mga lalaban ngayon sa Tokyo Olympics? Sa akin naman, oh, mapapayo ko siyempre ang, uh, dahil ibigay mo na lahat yung mga base mo sa training. Tapos ang uh, pagdating sa taas ng ring, yung nano ko lagi sa ano, nihingi ko sa Panginoon, sa ko, Lord, ikaw na bahala sa laban ko. Pag uh, pinapaubaya ko sa kanya lahat yung mga laban ko. Para, yun ang ano, yung, nagbibigay ng uh, lakas ng loob din sa atin. At saka, baga, Pagka naibigay mo ka sa Panginoon, talagang gagawin mo rin ang gagawin ng mga lahat ng mga, rin, mga pinaghirapan oh, mo oh. sa insayo. So, right. maganda. Dahil uh, wala ka ng pressure ba? Maga buong loob mo dahil kakampi mo Panginoon sa taas ng ring. Tama. Alam natin, uh, uh, Coach Boy at Coach Rowell, na matagal na tayo hindi nakakamedalya. Uh, ngayon, may pagkakataon tayo. Meron tayong mga atleta. And of course, ang ating boksingero si Yumir Marcel at si Nesky Petesio uh, na, na, na maaari madagdagan pa. What do you think Iris, are our chances? Ay, si Iris Magno. A- a- ano sa tingin nyo ang pag-asa sa- para tayo ay makakuha ng medalya ngayong taon na ito? Coach Boy. Uh, malaki ang chance natin na uh, sa kay Yumir, malaking chance natin makasungkit tayo ulit ng uh, medalya. Uh, babae, first time natin sumali dyan, pero uh, pag nakalusot din si Nisti sa qualifying, uh, malaki ang chance natin. Kaya Iris din, mayroon tayong may pag-asa pa rin tayo kay Iris. Uh, mm-hmm. maganda, kasi gumaganda ng gumaganda yung parang bumuo ang loob ni Iris ng gusto sa dahil Olympia na siya, eh, mag-Olympia oh, na siya. Oh. Mas parang oh. nagiging maganda po ang nagiging maganda ng, niya. Ng, ano, sa kanya sa sarili niya ang Olympics na to. Uh, okay. Gusto niya rin uh, talagang gumawa ng pangalan. Ang ano naman namin kay Nisti, talagang willing naman talaga si Nisti nga ma-qualified. Gusto niya talaga ma-qualified. Pag si Nisti okay. ma-qualified, malaki, mas ma- ang chances sa kanya at saka kay Yumer, maganda pariho. Uh, well, either yan, babae o lalaki ang mag-contribute ng medal. Pero mag-medal talaga tayo dyan. Okay. Roel, uh, sa ngayon ka ba sa pagiging pro? Ni Yumir, ito ba ay naka- makakatulong sa kanya o ito kaya ay makakasama? Ano tingin mo? O, o ito ay wala namang, wala namang masyadong malaking epekto? 
Ah, uh, wala naman sa akin nakakatulong no dahil uh, unang-una biro mo pandemic ngayon mga boxer natin puro lang kami naka-online so si Umer talagang face to face yung uh, training niya at saka yung sparring niya so malaking bagay talaga yung kay Umer no dahil uh, kasi kung dito lang siya sa Pilipinas puro online lang walang competition at doon nakakakapag-compete pa siya at nakapag-sparring at nakapag-insayo ng uh, talaga may sinusuntok na yung gaya ng pansimbaga. Kasi malaking bagay talaga yon Kaysa mm-hmm. puro lang online, talagang hindi sapat eh. Pero at least kahit pa paano, nagiging active din yung mga boxer natin dito sa probinsya kaysa oh. walang ginagawa. So kahit pa paano, mayroon silang ginagawa sa online training. At saka kayo, mer talagang the best talaga yon na napasok siya doon sa pro. At the same time, madagdagan pa rin yung kanyang experience at ang kaalaman niya sa pagbuboxing. Dahil may, sana nga, eh. na, may mga kanya-kanya rin ano eh. May mga kanya-kanya rin kasi siyang idea para ma idadagdag doon kay Yomer. Uh, oh, sana nga eh matapos na itong ating pinagdaraanan para eh, maging normal na ang ating pag ensayo Of course, matatagalan pa to. Kaya kayo nasa sa loob ng isang bubble na naman. And hopefully, eh, payagan na nga ng pamahalaan ang mga national athletes natin, lalong-lalo na mga Olympians, na talagang puspusa na uh, na maghanda patungo sa Tokyo Olympics. Kanina, bago kayo bitawan na uh, Coach Boy at saka Coach Roel, nabanggit mo kanina, Boy, na isang bagay na natutunan mo ay yung dapat ay, uh, ika nga, ay yung mga judges ay uh, mapapakita mo yung suntok mo, yung galaw mo para maiskuran, no? Of course, iba na ngayon ang sabi mo nga ang scoring system. But, ang tanong ko, eh, sa tingin nyo ba, kasi may mga nagsasabi sa akin, ha, mga eksperto rin naman sa boxing, na nagsasabing, eh, talaga naman kailangan alagaan yung mga husgado, eh, yung mga hurado, yung mga judges na yan, dahil at the end of the day, eh, sila pa rin ang husga sa isang laban. So, sa tingin mo ba, Coach Boy, eh, isang malaking bagay yan na maganda ang ating relasyon sa mga husgado uh, at, sa, of course, sa mga nagpapatakbo ng boxing? Ang ano naman natin, maganda naman ang naging ano natin siya, lalo ngayon, medyo maganda na kasi meron tayong, kasi si Ma'am Karina, member ng uh, ITO siya, International and Technical uh, Official. So, bagas ano, nakakatulong yun kasi bagas ano, alam ng mga kasama niya na Pilipinas siya. So, pag kami naglalaro, siyempre, malaking bagay din na merong tinitingnan sila na may kasama silang ITO na taga okay. Pilipino. Di, siyempre, mas malaking. Di, eh, dati, wala tayong official sa loob ng AIBA. Eh. Ngayon, meron na tayong mga official sa AIBA. So, ma- maganda naman ang nagiging relasyon natin. Kahit na sino naman ang nakaupo dyan na AIBA president, uh, okay naman. Uh, okay. Kasi, pinagbabawal na nila talaga yung mga maka- makausap mo yung mga judges, gaya kami mga coach, hindi kami pwede makalapit sa mga river eh. Oh, pwede kasi iniba nila yung hotel nila. Eh, sana nga. Sa, sana nga. Ganun, ganun mula nung ano, no. mga mula 19 uh, Olympics nung Rio Olympics, ganun ang ginagawa na hinihiwalay nila yung mga Victorian okay. judges, mga officials. Hindi nila, pinapa, hindi nila pinapapasok sa ibang mga hindi membro nila. Well, so, exclusive uh, no. lang talaga sa kanila. O, no, kaya, no, kung mauli ka, pumunta ka doon, tinatanong nila ng lugar mo kung anong bansa mo, Pwede ka na i-suspended buong team mo. Okay. So, well, medyo naubusan na tayo ng oras, na, Coach Boy, uh, Coach Roel, pero kami po ay nagpapasalamat sa inyo sa oras na binigay niyo sa amin ngayon. Sana nga ay tayo ay makakuha sa wakas after a long, long time ng, ng ginto muli sa boxing. Maraming salamat, Coach Boy, at saka Coach Roel. Thank you very much po. Maraming salamat. Kaya natin yan. And of course, that was Com Noli Ayala with uh, Coach Boy and uh, Coach Ruel Velasco. Good luck sa ating mga Olympians, especially sa larangan ng boxing na lalahok sa ating 2021 Tokyo Olympics. At at this point na po, it's nice na dating uh, batiin, of course, ang member Malay Balay Branch staff, si Jovi, si Ninya, at si Boy John. At uh, maraming salamat sa pag-suporta at uh, sa pagtutok dito sa ating Power and play. We will take this short break. Uh, Power and play with Com Noli Ayala will return after this.
Welcome back with us here on Power and Play with Com Nolly. Hello once again. Com Nolly is not with us today. So ito po si Noel Zarate, pinch hitting for the usual host of this show. At this point, puntahan naman natin ang ating This Week in Sports History. And we go all the way back to January 15, 1892. Yes, 118 years na po ang nakalipas nung inilabas ni Dr. James Naismith ang mga patakaran sa inimbento niyang laro. Walang iba o hindi po ang basketball. Ang unang laro, ginamit po nilang uh, soccer ball. At uh, yung ginagawa po nila sa soccer ball, eh, sinushoot doon sa isang pitch basket na ipinakulang sa pader. Pitch basket po yun. Hindi pa po nila naisipan lagyan ng butas yung basket. So, tuwing may nakakashoot, may kailangan pa umakyat doon para kunin ang bola. At yun nga po yung humble beginnings of the sport of basketball. Of course, this week in sports history, January 15, 1892. And of course, once again, thank you for joining us dito po sa Power and Play. We've had so many interviews today, insightful interviews actually, uh, with Troy Wright, with Santi Santillan, who will be joining the PBA draft uh, this uh, just a few weeks from now. Pati na rin na nakausap natin si Chairman Philip Elio Wico of the Philippine Superliga, ang plano ng, uh, ng, ng PSL coming in. Of course, we have the Beach Volleyball Challenge Cup. At the end of February, matutuloy nga ba ang uh, All Filipino? And he's answered all of those questions as well. Pati na rin ang pagtatalakay ni Com Noli doon sa magkapatid na si Coach Boy and uh, Roel Velasco. At uh, of course, yung mga uh, binabalak nila para sa ating national team sa upcoming Tokyo Olympics. And in just a few minutes, of course, we will talk about the NBA. We are just waiting for our guest uh, to... Uh, to show up dito sa ating uh, palabas. Ang ganda nga dito, virtual. They don't even have to show up in the studio. We don't have to put on makeup anymore. So uh, this technology is really mind-boggling and it has helped so many people throughout this pandemic. Of course, sa larangan naman ng NBA, napag-usapan nga natin kanina na ang dami mga cases uh, of COVID-19 na pumapasok. Why? Because they're no longer in a bubble format. Boston Celtics had to close their entire practice facility and uh, several players have already tested positive for the coronavirus. If not uh, nag-test, kailangan lang dumaan sa health and protocol paglabas. Kyrie Irving is still nowhere to be uh, to be found dito. Of course, uh, took a leave for personal reasons from the Brooklyn Nets at hindi ko alam kung nakita na sila o nakausap na sila ng kanyang bagong kakampi na si James Harden. And earlier today, we also got news that the Carl Anthony Towns of the Minnesota Timberwolves has tested positive for the coronavirus as well as six other players naman para dito sa Washington Wizards. So it is uh, something that uh, is very is quite alarming also because tanda natin, hindi pa po tapos itong ating uh, pandemia. And uh, we are still uh, waiting for the vaccine to be delivered to several countries. Let's see if that will help out sports in the United States. Let's take a look at some NBA scores as well. Ano, yung mga ibang games dito, ongoing already. Ang uh, labanan uh, ng uh, Chicago Bulls against the Oklahoma City Thunder. Bulls have taken a 12-point lead. It's quite surprising. And you'll probably uh, ask some of the Bulls fans, like our good friend Chuck Araneta, who's very surprised that the Bulls are actually winning games uh, this early season. They are up by 12 against the OKC Thunder. Later on, it will be the Utah Jazz. Uh, mga kalaban naman nila, Atlanta Hawks. And Atlanta Hawks slowly becoming a full strength naman sa kanilang uh, lineup. And uh, the Sacramento Kings will also take on the Los Angeles Clippers. Tapos a few more scores of the games that are ongoing right now. We are at the half naman sa labanan ng Boston Celtics against the Orlando Magic. And the uh, Celtics, uh, despite the fact that they do have uh, some players who are under uh, health and uh, safety protocols like uh, Jalen Brown, uh, they're up by 12 points ngayon contra sa Orlando Magic, 60 to 48 at the half. Also another halftime score, the Cleveland Cavaliers going up against the surprising New York Knicks ngayon and uh, the Cavs are up 57-55 uh, also at the half. And just underway naman, uh, patapos ng ating second quarter, the Milwaukee Bucks uh, taking on the Dallas Mavericks. Of course, uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo going up against uh, Luka Doncic. Ang ganda na matchup na yan. And I'm sure a lot of people are getting a kick out of that duel. It's a three-point lead uh, by the Milwaukee Bucks, 47-44. to 44, Time winding down in the first half of action. So those are some of the updates so, sa nangyayari po sa NBA. And uh, alam na natin uh, the PBA is also talking about uh, restarting the season. Pinag-uusapan nga ng PBA, uh, Commissioner uh, Willie Marshall has already mentioned on several occasions that they intend to start on April 9, which is actually the anniversary date of the PBA back in 1975. That was the first time the PBA opened its doors on April 9, 1975. So season 46 is set to begin on April 9. But as Commissioner Marshall said, we still have to wait for the news 
na mga vaccines na parating dito. Of course, the PBA is in line for that as well. Uh, there have been talks of uh, doing what the NBA is doing, yung uwian, Araneta Coliseum siguro, and then go back home. But we still don't know uh, if there's going to be a threat na mag-spread ng virus sa, sa ganong uh, uh, procedure. Uh, I do know, I was part of the PBA bubble nung uh, nakaraang October to December. And it was very strict doon po sa Quest Hotel, sa Clark. Uh, traveling kami from Clark, you just ride the bus. Uh, about less than 15 minutes nandun na kami sa Angeles University Foundation pagbaba ng bus isa na naman sa damukal na disinfection na naman ang nagaganap and then you go to the court half time they disinfect the court and right after the game you head back straight into the bus ha? kahit na pwede, hindi ka pumunta pwede pumunta sa tindahan hindi ka pwede pumunta sa mga kainan dun sa tabi right out of the gym you have to ride the bus and go back to Quest Hotel at doon talaga bantay sarado po talaga kami. So, uh, it was very it was a very great experience. Actually, if the bubble is held again by the PBA and and the Commissioner Marshall has already intimated before that uh, he has no problems holding it once again in Pampanga that entire setup with Quest Hotel at the Angeles University Foundation that worked. In fact, yung bubble na ginawa ng PBA, yun din nagagawing style ng bubble ngayon ng ating qualifiers for the FIBA Asia Cup uh, qualifiers nga rito. Ang problema, hindi pa rin po natin alam ang cast of characters. Uh, sino mga countries na papayagang makapasok sa Pilipinas para matuloy ang ating uh, FIBA Asia Champions Cup. There have been travel restrictions with some teams that are supposed to go here. Of course, the Oceania group uh, is starring uh, New Zealand, uh, Australia, Hong Kong. That group is supposed to be coming here to the Philippines. We're still not sure Yon, but definitely it will be held here on our shores uh, on the, the third week of February, ang ating uh, FIBA Asia Champions Cup. And if it's going to follow the same setup ng uh, PBA bubble, I doubt if there's going to be any uh, threat of any infections because the way the PBA handled that was beautiful talaga. Yung, uh, yung sa loob ng Quest Hotel, uh, just, to, just to let you know, kudos to the staff of uh, the Quest, uh, uh, Quest Plus Conference Center who sent po kami next stay for more than two months very accommodating staff. Nasanay na rin sila sa kaguluhan namin. Everybody bonded with the players, with the coaches. In fact, after a while, parang hindi mo na nami-miss yung outside world eh. Parang naging mundo mo na yun eh. Yung bubble ng, ng PBA na when we were having it. Siyempre, nung pakunti ng pakunti yung teams, parang mas malungkot na. Kasi siyempre, wala na yung mga ibang kapitbahay nyo. And in fact, in our case, uh, fourth floor kami nung time na yun. Kapitbahay namin, ang Alaska Aces, pati yung yung Phoenix, nung nawala yung Alaska, teka, medyo malungkot. Pero nandiyan pa rin naman sila Calvin, nandiyan pa rin naman sila JC Intel, Matthew Wright, Phoenix, di ba? So masaya pa rin. When Phoenix got eliminated, we had the whole fourth floor to ourselves. Doon na namin naramdaman, oy, homesick na tayo sa pag ano, pag natapos na ito, diretso na tayo uwi. And sure enough, Barangay Hinebra was able to defeat uh, TNT Catropa in five games in the finals. And we were all able to leave the facility by December 10th after being there, in, in our case, of course, for 63 days. Yun ang... Uh, Matagal na talagang uh, nahiwalay sa pamilya. But again, going through that experience again, yung uh, acclimatizing to the bubble, if the PBA holds that bubble again, why not? I mean, nobody really had any bad memories of uh, being away from their family there for at least two months. Kasi yung mga ibang teams, of course, end of September pa lang nandun. And the bonding that was created doon sa Clark bubble of the PBA was amazing. And of course, we'd like to uh, also thank the PBA staff uh, led by Commissioner Willie Marshall, Deputy Commissioner Eric Castro, and everybody, of course, who made that bubble possible. And, of course, we do have some PBA draft. Naman, uh, speaking of the PBA, we do have a lot of hopefuls coming in sa ating upcoming uh, PBA draft. And uh, we have... Teka lang, ha, ko lang we have 40 applicants already para sa ating uh, PBA draft. Now, highlighting the latest batch of applicants are Ano Pilipinas players Andre Caraco at itong si Zardi Rangel ano, na kasama nga natin dyan sa upcoming uh, PBA draft so wala na nga po nag-fold na ata ang Ano Pilipinas we're not quite sure what the news is sa Asian Basketball League but the stalwarts itong Ano Pilipinas at least it's starting itong kasama si Andre Caraco at saka si Rangel ano, because we're still waiting on guys like Jeremiah Gray Kung uh, makapunta sila, Jordan Heading, if they can, if they're also part of this draft. Ano? At Alam co-founder Charlie D, who is also a Karakot and Rangel's agent, uh, joined them uh, in going to the PBA office in Quezon City to submit their draft application alongside these clients. Uh, itong si uh, Junjun Busum, uh, Busumbre. And uh, of course, uh, following a stellar uh, NCAA career, uh, juniors' careers, uh, San, uh, San Beda Taytay, Karakot went to La Salle to play college ball and eventually 
forming the explosive guard combo silang dalawa ni Aljun Melencio uh, later in the UAAP. So that's also good news ano, for, for the fans of uh, Karakot and Rangel that they are now joining itong ating uh, PBA draft. And a lot of hopefuls also, a lot of uh, former players also of the ASEAN Basketball League, yung mga seasoned na, ano, seasoned na, seasoned na, is uh, supposed to be joining the draft. So 40 applicants already as of now. And uh, alam naman natin, nag uh, lessen yung restrictions na rito, especially with the Phil, Phil Americans. Uh, the paperwork is not that stringent anymore. Yung ibang documents dyan could be to follow. So we could have a very, very deep draft. Uh, for the 2021 season of the PBA. And hopefully, the 2021 season starts on April 9. We don't know if it's in a bubble setup. We don't know if it's a closed-circuit setup. But of course, alam naman natin, the success of the PBA bubble last December could be a prerequisite para sa next season nitong PBA. So once again, uh, we're still here in a power and play uh, with Pom Noli Iyala. And once again, Pom Noli uh, is not with us today. Topo si Noel Zarate, that nagdadadal dal dito, uh, pinch hitting for uh, for Com Noli. And we welcome all of you uh, dito sa ating programa. Balikan po natin ulit muna itong ating pulso ng bayan. Ha? We started the show with this question, of course, na nakita natin sa latest uh, mock draft nitong uh, uh, Bleacher Report na itipuera na naman itong si Kai Soto sa lista ng mga PBA draft hopeful sa pwede makuha sa first round of the NBA draft. Dapat bang, dapat ba natin ay eh, pagkaalala ito? Dapat ba tayo maging concerned dito? Sagot, uh, sumagot kayo dito sa ating pulso ng bayan. Mag-text lamang sa 0949-691-4956 o mag-comment sa ating Facebook page sa Radio 5 pati na rin sa ating fa sariling Facebook page dito sa power and play. So, we are going to be talking NBA right now with uh, one of our special, uh, one of our friends, of course, one of the, my broadcast partners uh, so when I cover the PBA, when I cover the PBA D-League, and one of the more talkative guys on TV, not really that talkative in person, but we're going to be talking uh, to him about NBA. I don't know if he's ready already. We're waiting love for the go signal uh, because uh, we finally have him. He's going to be on audio Para sa, ano, sa ating mga fans, pero maririnig nyo naman, very, very clear naman ang boses ng ating sunod na magiging kasama. We have basketball coach and basketball analyst, the one and only Charles Tew. Charles, how are you? Hello, I'm Noel. Good morning. I'm yeah, good morning, I'm Charles. And yeah, we, how have you been doing now? I haven't seen you in what, uh, since the, the start of the PBA bubble. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm I know I've I've been missing basketball. That's what just uh, working. Uh, we have our NBA hype show also on, on uh, TV Five and uh, NBA TV Philippines. So that's one thing that's keeping me busy. But you no, know, it's it's really hard missing. I miss coaching basketball and all, all our other basketball shows. So I'm really hoping this pandemic can end and we can go back to our regular lives of uh, loving and working in sports. Well, since you did mention that you do have shows in the uh, involving the NBA, of course, over on One Sports and on Signal, ano, uh, we are going to talk about NBA. And of course, the biggest news that happened last week, natupad na ang pangarap ni James Harden na mawalay na sa Houston Rockets. But it took four teams to make this happen in this mega trade sending itong si James Harden to the Brooklyn Nets to rejoin his former OKC Thunder teammate. Um, Kevin Durant, uh, and of course, when if and when Kyrie Irving shows up, that'll form the newest big three in the NBA. First of all, your thoughts about this trade? Uh, well, I think it was a long time coming already. Obviously, James Harden showed a lot of uh, displeasure with the organization, how he has been being a guy like James Harden, who pretty much has had whatever he wanted in Houston. Yeah, we're, we're, we're a little choppy at with Charles. Could you repeat that, Charles? Uh, okay. Hello? Can you hear yeah, me? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. You were saying about James Harden. Hello, Noel? Yeah, can you hear me? Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Hello? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Are you... Can you hear me, Charles? Coach yes, Charles. Hello? Hello? Yeah. I, I think we have a communication issue right now here with uh, Coach Charles too. Let's see if we can get him back online. Maybe you can Hello. Hello. try calling again. Charles, can you hear me? Hello? Can you yeah, hear me? Can, can you hear me? I yeah, mean, I can hear you. Okay. Good. All right. Um, good, so good. All right. We're back online. So, yeah. so you're yeah. saying about James Harden. Go ahead. You, you sort of lost you there for a bit. Well, I think it was a bit disappointing for me uh, seeing that 
heart and basically quit on the Rockets. He pretty much had whatever he wanted the last few years. Obviously, he did so much for the franchise, the, the, all the playoff appearances, his MVP. I mean, he was great for them. But they, they built the roster around him. Uh, they got him Chris Paul. They got him Russell Westbrook. They tweaked everything. The offense was... Everything was for him, basically. And the moment, well, he felt that they weren't going to win uh, or did we have a chance to contend the championship he wants out now and it, it's hard because you see a player as good as him but now that I've been reading more about the, the stories that the former teammates former members have been talking about what was going on I mean they basically adjusted everything for him he was he'd show up late he'd party uh, he was basically a bit selfish which to me is well disappointing for, for a guy like that especially when you, you know the whole team is basically geared towards you so when he asked for that trade it was well not, not uh, a bit disappointing but we all saw it coming so i think now the brooklyn nets obviously are going to be one of the favorites if not the favorites in the east assuming Kyrie irving comes back and assuming they can all figure out chemistry and fit their egos together all right, Charles, we've got less than three minutes remaining on the show. Um, I'll, go, I'll go straight to it. Hello? Um, who's your early MVP candidate at this moment? I think for me, it's Nikola Jokic, who has been just playing great basketball. Obviously, the Denver Nuggets aren't at the top right now, but he's been playing really well, averaging pretty much a triple-double, leading the league in assists. I'd go with either him, Joel Embiid, or LeBron James, because, well, the Lakers are playing great basketball again. And speaking, of course, of LeBron James and the LA Lakers, you think they can repeat with the lineup and what everybody's bulking up in the East. Nakita naman natin, James Harden, lumipat na sa, sa East because uh, the Lakers seem to own the West. You think the Lakers can do it again? I think they have a great chance. It's going to be either them or the or the Clippers. Uh, they still have the most versatile lineup in terms of a big man in Anthony Davis who can play like a guard. I mean, you know, everybody was trying small ball for a while. Uh, following the Houston Rockets, but now we see that it doesn't work. The rise of the big men are slowly coming back, but it's not just big men, traditional big men. It's big men who can do pretty much everything, uh, inside, outside, be uh, versatile in defense. And Anthony Davis is the best player in the world in that. And then you still have LeBron James, who's showing he's still top five, top three in the world. And those two make for a great combination. Plus, they have a lot of different role players who are, who can be really good. Uh, Schroeder, Harrell, even Mark Gasol is a great fit. I mean, I think yeah. they're still a complete team. All right. Thank you very much. Bitin talking to Charles Stewart. I'm sure we're going to have more of Charles uh, next time. But thank you for joining us once again, Coach Charles Stewart, right here on Power and Play. And that's all the time we have for our show today. And uh, of course, Komnoli Ayala will be back in next week for more of Power and Play. Topo si Noel Zarate. Enjoy your weekend. And thank you for stopping by. <laughs>